course I'm not going to freak out. Everything's chill. Just hanging out at the bar here, just relaxing. End of the day. Thought I'd sit down and talk to you about a few things. Like uh, feds and cities. Feds and cities, man. Feds and cities. Feds and cities is an interesting dilemma for me. You have a situation where, well, I think that an action is occurring that is demonstrating the idiocy of having to align yourself with one uh, all or nothing live or die faction, <laughs> which is what we find ourselves in America today. It's an all or nothing live or die world that we all live in. Everything is death, 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 and urgency. And yeah, uh, well, I mean, there is coronavirus going on, so there's some degree of truth to that, I guess. But but most of it is, well, most of it is the need of factions to keep you uh, willing to commit violence against your neighbors, I imagine, for the most part. But feds and cities, feds and cities. It's an interesting situation to me that's occurring there where we find ourselves watching leaders of a major political party with that, that control the House of Representatives, that control many mayorships, many governorships, many state houses and state senates, pretty much openly supporting sedition when they come out and they literally support people attacking federal courthouses. Now, if you're a political activist type person, I certainly understand why you might do that. But when you're an elected official and you find yourself in a vehicle of power that kind of, uh, it kind of forces you to align yourself with sedition. Now, I'm not saying literally like a letter of the law, but certainly if you're an elected official and you are literally supporting human beings trying to destroy any government property, you're pretty much a seditionist. You're violating your fundamental duties as 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 a, as a as a member of government you signed up to be part of this particular coercive enterprise you swore to uphold the constitution of the united states and it doesn't really allow for elected officials to openly support riots to literally incite more riots and violence and they find themselves having to support these people because they happen to have taken on the mantle of of this uh, dealing with the fundamental threat to America, as they would have you believe, which is racism. Fundamentally, it's racism. And so because they have taken that as their excuse, and, and I'm not saying it's not like they may legitimately, whatever, I'm not saying why they're, I mean, but, in, in the sense this is the excuse sometimes excuses are like it's 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 you know oh do you have an excuse yes i was literally sick okay the the it's a legit excuse i'm not but i'm not i'm but anyway so i i'm i'm using in that sense so the so the excuse the excuse is that uh this is going to stop racism racism is killing people and people are dying everywhere because racism which is a bunch of bullshit it's not true People are not dying everywhere because of racism. People aren't dying everywhere at all, as a matter of fact. Really. I mean, people are dying. And because of coronavirus, there's a certain amount of, of more dying. I don't know. I really don't know. Because of, like in Pennsylvania, for instance, the last I checked, which is about, um, it was about a month ago, so maybe it's changed since then. But last I checked a month ago, it was something like 60, 70 percent of the deaths in Pennsylvania were from people over the age of 80. And so I think significant portions of those folks were probably going to soon die anyway. A lot of these po and not, not just 80, but also with the comorbidities. And so I don't know how much more significantly that that that's adding to the death. But uh 
I, I fundamentally, no, but we're not all dying all around us. That's not happening. It's a lie. The world is not falling apart. The only thing that's falling apart is our emotions. And I'm certainly, I'm in it, man. I mean, I'm, 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 I battle my demons, and uh, I got, I got health issues, and so they really exacerbate my ability to, to, to not be led by my emotional fears and and whatnots. So the Democrats find themselves, they have aligned themselves with a group that has delivered to them real power, power on the streets, you know, real physical power. They show up in the thousands and do their bidding. Well, they don't think they are, but they are. So that base, with if, that, if they turn on that base, they are fundamentally done. So they find themselves locked into this menu that they've, put out there you have to take the whole menu this is and the racisms this is this is their fundamental risen death is end the racisms if we end the racisms the world is better otherism is the disease not racism it's much deeper than racism it's far more pervasive too and it takes on many forms but that's another story anyway they find themselves locked into that and then you have on the other side you have the only people that are offering to sustain the Bill of Rights, this is the, I don't know if you guys realize this, but the legitimization of power in America is the Bill of Rights. That is what ultimately gave the U.S. government its authority to, to rule. The, 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 the real king or queen or, or, or whatever of, of America is the Bill of Rights. That's our only master. If we are American citizens and we wish to uphold and defend the, 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 this American state, which I do. I mean, I do in, in only because of, of where I live. I live in a neighborhood of nation states, and uh, na- America is by far and away the best one. So, so I'm all on board, man. I'm all on board, Bill of Rights. That's the only group in town, the only group in town that's offering to actually uh sustain the bill of rights the democrats they have party leaders at the highest levels that 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 will tell you that uh the bill of rights is a it's some sort of racist construct so it's it's invalidated because racism it's literally invalidated because racism i mean that's the stupidest retardest thing i've ever heard but that that's 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 what i'm getting from this group these wonderkins you went to princeton to learn that whoa what a fucking idiot so here is the right. But they have a whole menu of stuff of their own. And you know one thing that's on that menu that I just can't take? I just can't stand. It's uh, it's illegal immigration. Calling people illegal governments, I can't stand it. I think it's horrible. I, 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 I completely empathize with... When I think illegal immigrant, by the way, I think of people that look like a lot of faces. I don't think I, I don't fetishize Hispanics. I'm not a fetishizer of races in general. So when I think of America, I think, boy, oh, just a blur of faces. And when I think illegal immigrant, now I do, I do see more Hispanic faces in my head because I think they are fundamentally more the target. But, but I see, I see Somalis, I see Romanians, I see all kinds of people. I see human beings, and there's some human beings here that are maybe should be rounded up because of they've actually done violent things outside of them. There's a whole bunch of people that have lived here. And all they, all they, all they, all most of these human beings want to do is live better than they did, which is all most of us want to do. Like I could so fundamentally relate to that. That's why these human beings are so real to me. Illegal immigrants. These human beings who have been here for 10, 15, 20 years in many instances, families, they're Americans, haven't, haven't been to the country that they came from 5, 10, even if you've been away for five years, especially like if all your family's dead, and now they're going to round you up and send you home, and we're okay with this. It's still going on. Why aren't the Democrats saying anything? What is, I tell you this, black America, you aren't under threat nearly as much as illegal immigrants are. So get off your fucking high horse. Why don't you go out there and march for them? They are far more under direct threat by federal authorities than you are. 
like by what I whatever you want to call it. Your life is golden compared to theirs. But if I'm going to sign up for the right because the Bill of Rights, I got to accept that too. And most of us, that's what we do. We, we. I mean, I, I, I find myself various times trying. I mean, I find I fundamentally more root for the right, <laughs> only because of the Bill of Rights. That's the fundamental reason. Because the left scares the fuck out of me. They have no respect of uh, other human beings outside of their very, very narrowing definition of decency. I can't fucking abide that shit. But I, am not gonna sign up. For a whole fucking menu being crammed down my damn throat. And I have to take it all. So I'm not signing up. I'm not doing it. And feds and cities, this really drove it home for me. I mean, I'm, I, I didn't even address, should feds be there? What What's the deal with that? You got Democrat, you have Democrat, you have Nancy Pelosi referring to feds as stormtroopers, Donald Trump stormtroopers. They're calling, they're for narrative. They're trying to associate federal authorities with Donald Trump that they say is literally Hitler. That's how you get cop shot, Nancy Pelosi. That's insane. If Nancy Pelosi is willing to do this to her own gang, why the fuck would you trust these people? What do you think they're going to do to you? Are you fucking nuts? So I find myself, fundamentally, I hope the fuck the right wins. I really do. I, I don't. I can't imagine. I, I think the left's uh, glory will be short-lived because they're going to be like Oliver Crump. Well, no, they're going to be more like the French Revolution, but they're going to be Oliver Cromwell in a lot of ways, except in a in a more condensed. Crom, Cromwell's, once he reigned, he reigned for like 11 years, but by the end of those 11 years, it was already over. The only reason that he held on to power was because he had such a godlike influence over such a core number of people, but as soon as he was dead, it was a he, he didn't build anything that lasted. His son lasted a couple years, and that was it. Charles II return. That was the end of the uh, Lord Protector. And that's, they're the Lord Protector. <laughs> that's literally who they think they are. So if they do take power, it's going to be sheer hell. It's like, you got to keep your head low. I got to keep my head low and like try to stay out of these people's way at least for a couple of years until they implode. Because they will, because eventually people are going to rise up because they're going to just go for it, I tell you. But yet, yeah, at the end of the day, and I wrestled with this for a long time, Pragmatically, I I, sh I should vote for the Republicans, even though I fundamentally don't even I, I, I wish that I could convince you all that this stupid, this whole course of enterprise model is always going to produce this blood and death. It's just always going to produce it. This is another cycle, same cycle as many, many, many cycles in the past. They're not all alike. There's differences. It's not mathematical, but there's it's significant enough similarities that you start to see. In, in many ways, uh, nothing is really different. Uh, all that's different is the names of the victims and the name of the heroes, the angels and the demons that people use. So I'm not doing it. I'm not. I'm not participating. I'm not participating. I can't help, and I probably, I just can't help rooting for the Republicans. And I just, uh, when I see stories that Democrats are winning, it hurts my heart. I see the Republicans are winning. Oh, I feel good. And then I think about things and then I feel like, oh, oh, just, uh, I mean, do you think the Republicans, I mean, Republicans had this type of social cultural power in America and they did HJW the shit out of everyone. So like <laughs> they're no better, uh, they have a, a a reason for the Bill of Rights constructs right now because they're weak. But uh, they'll selectively use it as they always do. And pragmatically, I probably will be one of the people. And and, and not because I'm white. It's, it, they're, it's really not about race that much anymore. Not even for the Republicans. They're not racist. There's too many. There's just too many human beings on this earth that do awesome things that look like all kinds of faces for us to really buy race. It's just, I mean, honestly, it's just retarded at this point. It's like, it's not even, 
I mean, you can't even carry it off seriously anymore. It's just laughable. The only thing that's left of racism in America for most of us is is the old habits that we don't really, uh, you know, we don't, you know, and we're working that out. We don't need your fucking uh, hyperventilating hell for us to work that shit out. We've been working that shit out for 30 plus years. I know I'm 52 fucking years old. I've been working this shit out for, 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 for at least 40 of those years. When I when I discovered what the word coon meant, because there were people in my neighborhood and they were talking about these coons that moved in and the coons were uh, wrecking the whole neighborhood. And in my head, I was like, how the heck could coons do that? I'm thinking raccoons, literally thinking raccoons. I'm 12 years old. I was, I, no, I wasn't 12 years old. I was 10 years old, somewhere around there. Maybe younger, but probably around 10 years old. Not, and I guess maybe, maybe I was tw- I was probably twelve because I, pro- I think I it happened when I was around eight and I didn't think about it and then and then uh, and then it dawned on me and they're like oh wait a second because I, I think by then I would have learned what coon meant in the racist sense I was like holy heck what else what the heck what's going on that's when I started to that's when I started to realize well even before that I started to realize that I was I was there was things in my head that I didn't put there. That was like that was one of those moments. So, <laughs> and I'm not the only one. There's plenty of human beings that have had this experience, white and all kinds of other, whatever. That, that we've been we're, we're, we've been working through shit. We didn't just sit around and do nothing. So, it's not race. Race is not the fundamental problem. The fundamental problem. Well. Never mind. I won't tell you the fundamental problem. I mean, the fundamental problem is the 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 inability of human beings to provide for themselves, to be stewards over their own lives, and a lot of that has to do with the structures, their physical structures, or all kinds of things. But a lot of reasons for that. But anyway, at the end, feds and cities, man, it it just it just leads me to not be able to support anyone i pray that the republicans win and i pray that if they do that they that they end the illegal immigration thing that they don't try to roll black the clock and and go after gay people and transgenders and try to strip people of the apply the bill of rights to everyone including gay people including transgender see that's your problem you only want to apply it to the state and you don't want to apply it to the market. You don't want to extend it to all human beings. You only want to extend it to normal human beings. Which, by the way, for Republicans is not a black-white thing at all. It's 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 heterosexual, uh, Christian, family, God, and flag. If you're those people, I'm telling you, they don't care if you're black or white or what. That's all they want. That's all they want. I'm telling you, it's not race. It's not race. It's those things. And those things are dangerous in and of themselves if they feel like superimposing on it on everyone like you want to superimpose yours on them. And they did on you, and now you want to return the favor, I guess. So anyway, let's uh, let's get another topic here. We're looking at... Oh, monogamy saved my life. Yeah. Monogamy saved my life. I have... Uh, It's an undiagnosed condition. I have been diagnosed with fibromyalgia and CFS and IBS, all that. These are autoimmune-related disorders, irritable bowel syndrome syndrome, and acid reflux. Acid reflux is a major problem, uh, a major problem in my life. Uh, But I also believe that uh, all of that actually really might be related to something called uh, adrenal POTS. So there's uh and I I forget what the pot stands for. I never could post tachyo something. It says it's basically in, in in a nutshell, the blood flow is wrong. So like if you stand up, like when I stand up now, especially when I'm when I'm going through a bad pots period where it's really cause I mean, you just you're wired to the gills. This stuff is it's incredible. It's like you I never I never I did cocaine very briefly in my life, and I never, I, I, I speed, cocaine, no, 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 I'm my own speed, I'm my own cocaine, trust me, adrenal pots, 
<laughs> so it's pretty intense stuff. And I'm going through a uh, period of time where uh, my body, I am in at least what feels like for me incredible pain, significant amounts of time. And this is this is pervasive. This is everywhere. There's no part of my body even right now as I speak that isn't in pain. My pain is, is pretty pretty low compared to what it's been really until today for I mean this this it's been and this is I'm getting to monogamy saved my life. So the pain that I have uh been experiencing for the last three and a half weeks. I go through periods of time where I get high what I call high pain days. Now most of the time I get a high pain day and then I'm a few days in a row, whatever fine. And sometimes I get two, three, five pain days in a row. Okay, I can deal with that. After I hit three or four days, I start to change. I become more and more paranoid. I become angrier. I become more reflexive. I become more emotional, highly emotional. By the by, the end of three and a half, three weeks of that, like yesterday was one of the worst days of my life. It was awful. It was. I woke up. And it was like it was like my body wanted to suck into itself, and the pain was off the charts everywhere, horrible, just and not only that, but the cognizance, the brain it's just you get these types of migraine things they're oh it's they're, they're not like they don't hurt you, they totally just. Make it difficult for you to think. Make it difficult for you to control yourself at all. You have no filter. I have very little filter in my life, fundamentally because of this. It's a uh, it's a uh, difficult, and it was. Uh, I mean, it was a horrible day, yesterday, and I tell you that I probably, most likely, will have to deal with whatever I'm dealing with for the foreseeable years and years to come. I doubt anyone will figure out what the freak is going on with me. 52 years old, I started getting weird things in my late 20s, and it's just worse and worse and worse. And I went through a period of time in my life where I really thought to myself, do I want to live? Uh, this isn't depression. This is, do I want to live with this type of pain so often in my life? To go through those three and a half weeks. And I probably have to do it again soon. And again and again. And... If you felt it, I think that you would understand when I say you would you would ask yourself, "Do I really want to live? Is 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 it is is it is it too high a price to live?" And I'm getting to don't worry. There's a happy ending. <laughs> Monogamy saved my life. So, I have been married for 18 years. 18 years and I tell you the truth I have never had sex with anyone in those 18 years other than my wife never I can't even say I mean I'm very sexual I am a highly sexual person as a matter of fact a lot of well uh, not all adrenal pots people are the same everybody's different but whatever it is that you naturally would like or whatever you love everything is through the roof heightened especially when you're going through your pots kind of stuff so i i've never been with uh, uh another woman for for 18 years over eight, you know yeah 18 years over 18 years just say that and my wife, I have full confidence that she has never, ever had anyone, sex with anyone outside of me. We're the only two people. We, we don't share ourselves with anyone else. We're, it. We're mutually exclusive. 
And uh, that 18 years, we went through a period of time, I'd say about the 8, 10 year mark, somewhere around there, where uh, I think we both really pushed it as far as our, our level of trust and our willingness to be kind of deceitful. Uh, both of us, but me, more far, far, far more than her. Nothing. Th- this, these are all financial things. This is nothing. No, no, no. Nothing promiscuity or drugs or anything. Just finances. So there was a period of time where I'd say both of us, in various degrees, kind of betrayed each other in some fundamental ways, and uh, we came to uh, forgive and. Uh, I mean, now we're we're both well past those that period of time. Uh, one of the reasons we got through it is because of the great stuff that led up to it, and and a lot of that is the sex, is the uh, years and years, and and uh, how special it has been for me. You know that exclusivity, that's just mine and mine alone, and and it's not possession. I don't possess her. I I I don't even have stewardship. I just I, I, I possess a moment. That's all I possess. I don't possess her. I possess the moment. And uh, that type of exchange, knowing that uh, that exclusivity, it uh, it enhances the experience. It enhances the oneness. The, I mean, we, we have quickies, and and sometimes our quickies are just, quickies but uh i'd say frequently even if it's just a quickie because of our relationship it's still there's this there's usually at least a couple of moments or like this this deep deep connection and it's uh and it's it's about all the moments it's like when we make love it's like it's it's a continuing story it's like we're continuing to make love for 18 years we've been continuing to make love and it's it's just getting better honestly we are doing all right it's really fantastic universe and uh there's no one in my life that wants me to win more than my wife wants me to win and there's no one i want to see win more than my wife there is a a, a profound level of uh connection to her story with my story that you could never ever experience unless you had the time you know it's a it's i don't know if the line was meant to be cheesy and it comes off cheesy but it's also profound i love it from Buffalo 66 spanning time together yeah so that I'm not I'm not sweating you however you want to live your life but I'm just gonna say gay straight or otherwise (laughs) monogamy and and you know you just you just monogamy with someone that's not engaged with you that you're not meshing with, that you're not regularly interacting with, that you're not regularly rooting for, and they're rooting for you, and you're regularly not disappointing each other. I mean, you're going to disappoint each other, but you're not regularly. You're not regularly not coming through. You're not regularly doing crap you're supposed to do. You're coming through for each other to the best of your abilities, to what you got. You're, you're representing your commitment to that person all the time. That's what I'm talking about. That type of monogamy. I mean, if you just have a, just to have a monogamous relationship is that's a, you'll probably have more fun having a polyamorous relationships, more fulfilling life. But I, I mean, and I'm not gonna say my life is better than the polyamorous because I think people are differently. I think there's some people that are probably fundamentally not wired to even want to experience that level of, of of depth of connection to one human being exclusively. I think me. I'll just say I think maybe significant. Probably the majority of us are built that way. Probably biologically, I think that's probably the case. But I don't know. 
But I, 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 I'm not preaching that monogamy is the best. I don't want to do that. Um, but it is the best for me. I, I, and I can say the reason I come back to waking up yesterday the way that I did. But I was not. I mean, listen. I'm an armed individual. I am not in any danger of doing anything to myself. And that was a decision that I made a couple of years ago, really. And 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 the decision was basically Oh, it's two. There's the first part is is what I have now. My I I mean I haven't <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm going to focus on monogamy, so I'll just talk about my wife. But what I have with my wife is something that I would uh, I would be stabbed in the eye every day, as long as the eye grew back, you know, next day. But you stab me in the eye, give me that horrible pain every day. I would do it every day to be with my wife. It's fucking awesome. She's the greatest human being in the universe, really. I mean, I don't, I don't, I really don't put her up on a pedestal, but she is the greatest human being in the universe, subjectively speaking, based on my evidence. <laughs> you can't argue with me. I mean, you can, but really, you can't. I mean, you can, but you can't. <laughs> and uh, and the other part is, uh, so long as I can uh, have any 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 kind of perception that I'm giving back to the universe just a little of uh, all in all, my life has been in so many ways pretty much of a failure. I have very little to be grateful for. I have a lot of uh, bad things happen to me, many of my own doing, some of not my doing. But all in all, I am so like, you with this POTS thing, you have weird things happen and sometimes you feel like you're having a heart attack. It happens a lot. Uh, so you never know, uh, cause one of these days you are more at risk to have a heart attack. So, uh, so I have those moments. I'm not, I'm not afraid to die. I'm afraid to leave my wife behind, but, uh, you know, I'm, a, I, I'm a Christian. And so I have my moments where I praise God and I thank him for my life. If I die today, I die happy just because of those 18 years alone because of monogamy. So there you go. That's my. Uh, it's not my. It's not my pitch for why monogamy is the best. It's my pitch for consider monogamy. You know, it's. It's it's uh, it saved my life. <laughs> it, it literally, because honestly, without what I have had, I would be a hor. I, I I'm horrible and bitter at times, but mostly when I'm really horrible and bitter and angriest when going through the highest highest when I'm really few days in a row of the high pain days but outside of that i'm not a bitter evil angry person i'm not i'm not i'm not bitter i'm grateful because of monogamy because of what i've experienced it's uh yeah there thumbs up for monogamy there you go there on that segment that way uh, let's get to the death of sport. Death of sport. I'm pretty much done with sports. Honestly, way before all of this stuff started happening where we're going to now use sports as uh, uh, partisan political propaganda, going to use sports. Now we're going to uh, totally politically weaponize our sports but they're not my sports anymore. They're just one particular militant faction sport now. I don't. I don't. I don't want to have anything to do with it. But I was already having problems with sports. In a way, this is kind of goes back to the feds and cities. And my my thing with sport that I was bothered by. Well, first off, for I, I just want to say I'm not an advocate at all of Colin Kaepernick and and uh, probably hardly any of his beliefs because I think he really is a tanky Marxist type guy. Uh, I mean, tanky Marxist, not Marxist tanky Marxist type guy. I think based on what I've seen, and and I think he's probably just mostly just a blooming idiot that just parrots whatever 
group happened to snag him up, and so it happened to be these guys. But I mean, I I mean, I could be wrong. I mean, uh, I think most people that that speak in large stages are fundamentally idiots that mostly parrot what their little factions say. So uh, I don't think he's probably not one of them. I could be wrong. I don't know. I've never heard him say anything that sounds even remotely outside of uh, of the parroted terms. And that's that's. But then again, I mean, I listen to anybody, philosophers, newscasters, whatever. Almost all of them sound like that. So I guess I shouldn't be surprised there. But I, for one, was quite taken aback at how offended Americans were that Colin Kaepernick knelt when they played the national anthem. It still boggles my... Well, it boggles my mind except when I think about uh, the reality of power. I'm not going to... Well, I won't get into it. I'll just, I'll just keep it within this framework. It boggles my mind. It doesn't make any sense because logically... Logically, the reaction should be, oh, well, that sucks. Oh, well, you suck. I don't like that. Screw you. And then that's it. I mean, I understand all that. What the heck are you doing? What ca- you make gazillions of dollars a year? What the frick do you think you're doing there? What what kind of crap is that? All right, well you you do you, you know that I understand. You know, tell me he's an idiot, jerk. You know, you want to put your voice out there. Somebody gonna call you a fucking idiot in response. You gotta fucking deal with it. They can call you an idiot all day long, Colin Kaepernick. Fucking idiot. There, I called you a fucking idiot. But man, I ain't gonna sweat you kneeling for the Constitution. I mean, for the Constitution, for the, for the, for the flag, for the national anthem. The, 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 the whole way that, that the sport has been used to basically, it, it's already been politicized. It's already been used as political propaganda. It's been used to hawk the military and American patriotism. And I... I would prefer. I mean, I'm not against the military per se. I'm not against American patriotism per se. But I, I, I would like that out of my sports too. And and these two things were reasons that I was I was already like like I love sports. I mean, you don't know how painful it is for me to walk away from sports. I love sports. I'm a huge Philadelphia Eagles fan. True, true blue Eagles all the way. I won't be watching them this year, even though they look pretty good. They 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 might they might. They might make a run at it, and I won't be there for it. I'm not tuning in. I'm not following. I, I there's uh there's some YouTubers that I'm I'm probably still gonna watch some of their videos. Not, but yeah, I know all they talk about is the Eagles. I'm still gonna watch them just because I like them. They're kind of like they're not really my friends, but they're kind of my friends. So like I don't want to let them go, my friends. But uh, I'm not watching the games. I'm not I'm not watching the videos for them for the. For football I'm watching it to enjoy their personalities because they're awesome but i'm i'm th- this just makes it easier for me because 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 now it's i mean i don't know if i could say it's worse it's worse from my perspective but from other people's perspective it's the other one's worse i i mean I, i'm not sweating you that that's your business i'm not saying that 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 I, and I made it clear. I'm not saying you should like what Colin Kaepernick did, or that you should not like it. I'm not saying you shouldn't react like really angrily at it. But you went way beyond that. People were calling this guy to be just destroyed. It's like the very you know you just fell right into their hands. They're like, look, 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 we're doing this because racism, and then I no. This is they, they didn't respond to Colin Kaepernick like this because of racism, but that's that's easy to carry that narrative. So so you just and then and then others start to kneel and it becomes a thing and you idiots. All you had to do was say, Well, you're fucking retarded, but okay, if you want to do that. You know, I mean, it's the American flag. Whatever the American, it represents, it, it represents good, bad. I don't ever want to hear anybody uh, just want to simply reduce the American flag to one symbol, good or evil. But, but, but the American flag does represent American authority. And American authority is fundamentally, it, it derives its legitimacy of power, its authority from the Bill of Rights. 
freedom of fucking speech. It's right there, Republicans, conservatives. Why are you sweating this man? Why are you sweating anyone that wants to kneel for the fucking flag? Come on. I, I, this scares, this is, I have, I'm not going to name, I know, I have a friend who commented on social media in a way that was derisive towards firefighters. It was pretty mean what he said. I even thought he was an idiot for saying it. He'll tell you he, he, well, he'll tell you he was an idiot for saying at least one, maybe one part of it, but parts of it, no, and I don't blame him for that. But this came from conservatives. I saw a whole bunch of conservative publications that wrote stories about this man, destroyed his business. Man is now living the van life. Now, he's happy living the van life. He's awesome. But, uh, he, he 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 in part he was he 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 faced jail time for well the long story but it wasn't because of what he posted on uh fire it was a series of well i'm not going to get into the details because you might figure out who he is and i don't want to do that so so i mean my point is i literally saw my friend get destroyed by conservatives because he went after one of their sjw gods you know, you go after the homosexual and 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 them and them SJWs will fucking kill you. You go after the firefighter and them conservatives will kill you. It's the same thing. The exact same thing. And it had this this kind of, you know, the conservative uh tendency to not fully live out the Bill of Rights and how they reacted to anyone who dares show. Listen, patriotism is fine. I, I I reject all your stupid idiot constructs about patriotism being white supremacism, racism, any of that freaking garbage. I mean, there's elements to that that's true. Racists do use that stuff as dog whistles. That is true. But patriotism isn't isn't racism. Uh, patriotism is what this is how nation states uh, uh, stay together in 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 part. Now, I ultimately. Well, I got re- I got issues with patriotism, but still, I'm okay with you with your patriotism. I ain't sweating anyone. You want to stand, uh, pledge allegiance, all that. That I got no I got no problem when anybody wants to do that. Well, I don't like to pledge allegiance in the schools. That's another matter. But I'm not sweating your patriotism. I'm not sweating you standing uh, for the national anthem. I mean, I would rather not have the national anthem played at uh, sporting events, but I'm uh, I could deal with it in and of itself i can't deal with the religious uh uh demand if i what if i just don't want to participate why 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 do you insist that i participate in your particular constructs you're an sjw well you're a friend of mine i i don't think he coined the phrase but he may have i don't know uh, uh call them cjws cultural justice warriors and and really you just call them maybe just P- PJWs, Patriot Justice Warriors. Maybe that's better. PJWs and SJWs. So now the NFL is going to end up with both because it's still going to. It's the military is. It's going to have to. It's going to have to pony up for the state. I'm telling you, military flags. That stuff is going to be there. So now it's going to have SJW and military and all of that. So I got no reason to watch it anymore. I'm like, oh man, that's uh. That's no fun. It's like every five seconds I'm going to see something that's going to make me want to stab my eyes. I don't want that. I want to chill. You know, the thing about sport is, and this is why I really, really hate, one of the reasons why I really hate the left, it, it, well, the American status left. I want to be very clear, whatever that means, left, right, but but American status left. They are the party of the poors, and yet, they want to take, you know, we poors for the most part. I mean, I'm, I haven't had to work physically hard probably in, well, probably about ten years actually. I, uh, I haven't had to work physically hard in ten years. Uh, I haven't had to grind. I haven't had to grind. 
but I've I've grinded. I've had to grind. I've I've worked the uh, the graveyard shifts at printing presses for years. I've done stuff. Okay, I've worked the crap jobs, uh, and I've I've had my share of 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 that that world, and so so I know at that level especially what it's like to. Your whole world is fundamentally filled with stress except for these small periods of time where you get to rest your mind and your thoughts in your head. And you, American leftists, don't want to give them that. You want to take even that away from them. You want to give we poors no, no rest from from all the dramas and the hates and the pains and the, the constant appeals to check yourself and destroy yourself with your own thoughts and have it reflected in every part of our lives and our sports and our movies and every everywhere and everything. No escape, no escape, no escape, no escape, no escape. It's 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 vulgar. It's 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 it, you have no idea how these human beings live to treat them like this. How I live. How we live. You have no idea how we live to treat us like this. To treat us as if as if as if we haven't done enough to earn our life. Have we as if I haven't earned enough to to, to have done it haven't done enough to earn whatever whatever scraps of joy I can get from this shit planet. And that's the way it is for so many of us. We we negotiate 10, 12 hours of shit to have two or three hours of happiness on a regular basis. That's that's the bargain. And you want that two to three hour space. You want to fill that with with just stress and pain and anguish and and torment. No rest, no rest for you because we want to make you in our image. So, you know, I'm done with sports until someone, well, I'm going to create a sport. I'm going to call the sport, uh, I'm calling eight count football. And it's uh, eight players to a team. It's not indoor football, it's outdoor football, but it's 72 yards. It's four yards. Uh, it, it's a, it's a, it's a eight yards. It's uh, not ten yards. Well, anyway, it's a whole. I'm gonna create this sport, and uh, and then uh, I'm gonna find people that want to play this sport. I'm just. This isn't gonna happen. I'm just. I mean, the idea is real. I I have all kinds of crazy ideas, but I mean, the idea is real. But I, I know it's never gonna happen. But in my little fantasy, the eight a, a eight count football happens. You got eight count football, and uh, you can. Uh, yeah, we're gonna create our own sports. We're new sports, new 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 basketball, new baseball, new, and it's gonna be people, human beings that are are fundamentally we're not religious, not all. And 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 I mean, if you're Christian or Muslim or any of that, you're welcome. But there's you know when you're religious, you know, there's plenty of non-religious Christians and non-religious Muslims and non-religious atheists. There's plenty of religious atheists, plenty of non-religious SJWs. You're welcome. The religious SJWs, no. Plenty of non-religious, uh, what I call them, PJWs? Plenty of non-religious PJWs. You're welcome. Is it a difference between religious and non-religious? The religious believe that they are absolutely positively morally right and certain, and they are the absolute angels, and you are the absolute demons, and therefore they have a right to reduce your capacity to engage in the process of deciding what is. You have no consensuality assumed. You're out. We're going to tell you what is. Those are the religious. And they come in a lot of forms in America today. And it has nothing to do with whether you believe in God or not. It's everything to do with whether you believe in making man in your own image, in essence. Metaphorically, at least. I guess that's all I'm going to say about the death of sport. I think I got one more topic, topic here that, uh, which one are we going to end up with here? So what I'm going to be doing? Well, I'll tell you about that later. Let's just uh, let's just stick to this. Uh, uh, let's talk about uh, the quantum factory. Here, yeah, that's a nice little last kind of thought before we we leave this this episode of Frico Talks and News. The the quantum factory. I've been think. I, I I saw a video recently, and it really really made it 
well, I began to understand the significance of quantum computing and what it could potentially do. Now, when I say understand, I mean I now know of things that look a little bit more like something not totally unknown. That. That's what I learned. I learned that, hey, hey, there's a thing. Before it was it was less of a thing, and now it's a little bit more of a thing. I can't really say it's fully a thing. But essentially, quantum computing, and I, I'm not going to try to explain to you the mechanisms about how this might be done or whatever, but in, in essence, it's uh, first it's Schroding, Schrodinger's cat. You start with Schrodinger, Schrodinger's cat. And Schrodinger's cat is the cat in the box is dead or alive, and it, it exists in those two, two states simultaneously until you open the box and then the existence is gone once the observation takes place it is reduced and so when it comes to quantum computing they have zeros and ones like these computers or our computers do however now this part is where i'm going to be kind of a little vague but but in essence there is a process by which there is a uh there is a part where there, the cat is in the box, so to speak, where the zeros and the ones are not, they're both at the same time, potential. And it's at that moment, if you capture that moment, your capacity to analyze multiplicities at the same time, uh, well, it's it's not even close as far as well, here here's how here's how it was explained, and I think this is a this is a really good way. Say you want to know the weight of every particle in the universe, if, uh, uh, like the actual weight. We're not going to do mathematics to determine. We want to go and literally we want to get literal weight of every particle in the universe. Our computers will have to go through every single particle in the universe. Blah 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 blah. blah. And take in the data, 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 and just go through. We don't even have computers that could even do that. We don't. They can't process the universe. They cannot really track all of the particles of the universe. It's way beyond our computer's capacity to do so because they have to look at every particle. And there's just too many particles. It would take them a gazillions of gazillions of years or whatever's. So with a quantum computer, what happens is, uh, oh, oh, what did I say? I think they said that if uh, a computer could process it in like 100 years or something like that, maybe maybe more years, I forget. I forget, maybe 1,000 years or 100 years, it's like that wide, okay? So, you know, I'm not a scientist, but, but, but the general of what I'm getting to is, is, is relevant. Whereas a quantum computer, because of its uh, of its Schrodinger's cat state, the box it has the box. It basically the power of the quantum computer is the box with the lid on. The box with the lid on is the quantum computer's power. And when the box has the lid on, there is a multiplicity of possibilities all at once. Now imagine now it's not just a cat, but it's uh, it's a it's a whole interchange of potential alternatives that you have in that box and now all at once all of it exists in a sense all the potential of it exists in a sense and so the quantum computer is going to be able to process the universe in a few hours you just think about what's going on out here in the race to get the first quantum computer if a nation state is able to get the first quantum computer and lock things down, I mean, which I don't, I don't, I doubt that'll happen. But if it, if they could, I mean, that would, it'd be all over for all the other nation states. They would have the capacity to analyze. Uh, uh, they would be able to know and and predict and. Uh, well, I don't know about predicting. That might be different. But knowing more than predicting, but. 
we will be able to document the entirety of the universe within a few hours of any quantum computer that's given the task to do so. Just take that in. That's what we're honing in on. Now, my point for talking about the, the quantum factoring is I have a theory. I have a theory that when they have their little quantum computers or their big, big boy, big gal, can we say big gal quantum computers? Is that inappropriate? Big gal, big boy. I know you can say big boy. Anyway, screw you. Screw you! Anyway, these quantum computers, they can process this. They can know the universe. And I believe that many people believe with the quantum computers that they will know how to design. They will be able to have the certain answers that will tell them how to create the human in their image. But I have a sneaking suspicion that all of the particles in the universe are not all the particles in the universe. That there are particles out there that we still have no idea even exist. And if our quantum computers don't know they exist, they won't know to look for them. That's my theory. And my theory is they will make these predict predictability models using these quantum computers. And, and when it comes to certain... When it comes to physiological constructs, they'll be able to predict with a lot more accuracy, a lot more things. It'll be pretty remarkable, some of the things like weather. I can't imagine uh, uh, how close they might get to weather. Now, I, I think even with weather, they're probably already going to be getting too complicated. That, that they're, they're going to find that uh, because we're missing data. My theory is we're missing data. The human beings with all of our instruments, the instruments that we design, of course, that are, and of course our instruments can see things that we absolutely can't see ourselves, but we know they exist and we know to look for them. Well, we can, we can obviously we, we can discover them too, but, but by and large we know they exist and that's why we design the instruments to find the things that we know exist, whether it's sonar, radar, finding, whatever. So, my theory is that uh, the quantum computers are going to reveal through their inaccuracies that significant parts of our world are very ex existentiality are simply for the foreseeable millennial futures beyond our capacity that we will come to know Fundamentally, what I wish all human beings knew, and, I, and I'm not saying I'm absolutely right, that would kind of contradict my overall aversion to absolutist type stuff in general, but that fundamentally, we just, we can't build the perfect anything. We can't, we can't even define the perfect anything, because... It's always going to be subject. It's always going to be in the individual's own head. It's always, always. And there's no way that you're going to be able to really master all of the factors that you would need to master to be able to truly design methodologies to, to authentically transform humans in your image. And that you will over and over again continue to have humans that are born in your very systems, your most powerfully controlling systems that are fundamentally not what you predicted. So, I think I'm going to end it there. This has been Frico Talks and News. I thank you all for uh, watching the show, if you do watch the show. And I'm going to do this show. Oh, you know what? I, I'll, I'll, I can speak a little bit more here about some of the things that are going on because uh, as you... Uh, some of you have been watching this channel. You can see videos. This is Action Bots, a YouTube channel. You can see the videos that have Frico Talks and News. Frico Talks and News is, was going to be and was for a few months uh, a daily show, Monday through Friday, that featured 
five key stories, the whole production. And I loved doing the show. I really did. I enjoyed doing it. But uh, what I realize is because of my health issues, I really, I can't put myself in a position to try to regularly engage with humans in live exchanges on a daily basis. Because when I am going through these adrenal pots things when they're at their worst, I'm, I'm not going to have a calm conversation with you. I'm going to feel like everything you say is a fundamental threat to my life. <laughs> I mean, not not literally, but viscerally, like not even existentially. It's and not even by a, a conscious thought. It's like it's like the body is in a constant war state, a constant fight or flight state, and the least bit of thing triggers that adrenal thing that just punches you it's uh i i mean probably like it's not quite like roid rage i'm not a physically violent person i'm a verbally violent person but i'm not i've never never hit my I'm, i've i think i've i have gotten in fights but those were all under the age of 20 so uh, <laughs> i haven't gotten in a fight physical fight with anyone it's under the age of 20 i've been in a couple of physical fights that weren't they were they were con Essential. It wasn't quite boxing, but it was just testing some. But I mean, nothing. They, those weren't like fight fights, you know, like dude, anybody beating me up or me trying to beat them up. Not not like that. But uh, so I'm just. I mean, you if you watch the show, you can almost see the days that uh, uh, those are the days where the, I mean the the premise of the show, which I'm gonna have to change this thing because I don't want to do that. Uh, where Frico tries not to freak out thing because I'm not going to freak out on the show because if I do freak out, you won't see it because I'm going to record this in advance and release it and just just make sure you get the best of me from now on because I can't, I can't, I just can't put myself out there in that state where it's it hurts, it physically hurts. Like emotions really, I feel emo like a happy emotion is wow awesome but pain anger th these things immediately the acid reflux starts i get i get nauseous i get lightheaded it's the body starts to get way more pain the, the my skin is on fire and you know if i scratch my skin too hard i can easily get red and oh it's i mean not not even too hard just lightly i don't want to do it because it hurts but uh I mean, if you touch me in certain situations and certain times, it, I will literally feel like you just burn me. It hurts. It hurts like hell. So emotions just, uh, they, they, it physically hurt, literally physically hurt. I'm, I'm deeply tied to them. So I can't, I, I, I love, I'm very happy with the show that I designed. And I designed the show that I wanted to make. And if I ever get my, my health, uh, if I ever get get through this, whatever this is, I'll do the show again the way I want to. But for now, this is, I think this is the best that I can do. I, I got my apex, I, well, I believe that we're fundamentally driven by apex existentials as we're trying to be, the is, was, always will be the, in whatever the best form. And so my apex existential is what I call the uh, ideational. I really... I really, uh, I really want to believe that my voice matters and that I have ideas that could significantly uh, contribute to my society as a whole. And I, I recognize most likely that's not true, but uh, I can't help but wanting it to be, and I can't help trying to see if it is. So I'm going to do the weekly show. That's what this is. So I thank you guys for watching. I, I'm going to end. This is going to end. I'm going to air these shows uh, fr <coughs> Friday Friday nights, or fr <coughs> yeah. Fridays, 5 p.m. Fridays, 5 p.m. That's when I release the show, so we'll see you on the next Freako Talks News next week.